Hello boys and girls, my name is Buddy Davis and this here is my dog Casey. Don't you just love God's wonderful creation? Well in this first video that my good friend Ken Ham and myself put together, we're going to show you just how amazing God's creation really is. Now who ever heard of a fruit eating Tyrannosaurus Rex or a funny looking varmint that has a bill like a duck, hair like a bear, tail like a beaver, lays eggs like a turtle, feeds its young with milk like a mammal and has poison like a snake? These are just a few of the fun questions that we're going to answer today. Now I want you to watch carefully and listen close and to help you do this we're going to do something that's really fun. Every time that Casey comes on the screen and barks <coughs> I want you to remember what's being said because I'm going to quiz you at the end of the video. Are you ready? Put on your thinking caps and let's watch. Well, my name is Mr. Ham, and over here I have Buddy Davis. Buddy Davis is actually a dinosaur sculptor, he's a taxidermist, he's a singer, and Buddy Davis comes all the way from a place called Henpeck, Ohio. It's a strange name, isn't it? Henpeck, Ohio. Well, boys and girls, put your hand up if you've heard of the word evolution. Oh boy, I think just about everyone puts their hands up. Hands down, put your hand up if you've heard that dinosaurs lived millions of years ago. Dear, oh dear, hands down. Put your hand up if you've heard that people came from ape-like creatures or something like that. You know, I think just about everybody in the world has heard those things. And I want to tell you right from the start here this morning that neither Buddy or myself, we don't believe in evolution. Evolution is the idea some people have to explain life without God. You know, when you came in here this morning, did you look at this building and say, wow, I got here by an explosion in a brick factory? You don't think that? <laughs> No, you know somebody designed this building and I certainly don't believe that life came about by chance random processes millions of years ago in some soup in the sea, life was formed and then one kind of animal changes into another, ape-like creatures into people until finally here we are in uh, Pennsylvania. I, I, I don't believe that at all, do you? <laughs> No, I believe what the Bible says actually. I believe that God created everything. We're going to talk about that uh, in a little while in more detail. I don't believe that dinosaurs lived millions of years ago and I certainly don't believe, and neither does Buddy, that you came from ape-like creatures or anything like that. I mean, did your grandfather look like that? <laughs> I don't think so. Did your grandmother look like that? <laughs> no, not at all. In fact, uh, you're very, very different to chimps or to apes and, and creatures like that. In fact, here's a man and he's looking at a chimp and he says, I can think, compose music, build bridges, fly airplanes, make computers, what can you do? And all he can think about is what? A banana. Well, boys and girls, I don't believe we came from ape-like creatures. I don't believe in evolution. Don't believe in millions of years. I believe what the Bible says. Do you know the Bible is a very special book? It's a unique book. It's different than any other book in the whole world because the Bible claims to be the Word of God who knows everything, who's always been there, who's told us the whole history of the universe. In fact, do you know what I call the Bible? The history book of the universe. Let's say that in a loud voice. The history book of the universe. And mums, dads and teachers, here's the history that the Bible teaches us. That God created a perfect world. He created everything in six days, just a few thousand years ago. That the first man, Adam, sinned and death came into the world. And there's the origin of death. That there was a global flood at the time of Noah's day. And so all the life on the land was destroyed except those on Noah's Ark. And Noah's Ark landed in the Middle East and the animals and people got off the Ark. And then there was an event called the Tower of Babel when God gave different languages. And that would cause all the different people groups like the American Indians, Fijians, Hawaiians, Eskimos, Australian Aborigines to form. And then Jesus Christ, the Son of God, stepped into that history because the first man, Adam, sinned we'd be separated from God forever, so he stepped into history to die on a cross and be raised from the dead so those who trust in him can spend eternity with him and one day there's going to be a new heavens and a new earth to come. That's the true history of the universe that God has told us. And you know what I'm going to show you here today? Buddy and I are both going to do all sorts of interesting things to help you understand that what the Bible says is true. It explains the universe, it explains who you are, it explains dinosaurs, it explains fossils. Isn't it exciting being a Christian and knowing we have a book that's the true history of the universe? It really is, isn't it? Well, the Bible starts off by telling us that God made everything in six days. It tells us what he did on each of those six days. On day one, he made the heavens and the earth. Day two, the atmosphere. Day three, the dry land and plants. Day four, the sun, moon and stars. Day five, the flying creatures and the sea creatures. And day six, he made the land animals and man. 
And do you know how he made the land animals? He said, let the earth bring forth the animals. Do you know how he made the first man? He said, let us make man in our image. And you know, I want you to understand something. You are very different to the animals. In fact, you're not just an animal. You have a body, like a mammal's body, that's true, but you're not just an animal. I want you to say after me, I'm not just an animal. Can you say that? That's right, you're very special. You're made in the image of God. You're not just an animal. You're very, very different to the animals. Well, you know, when God made the animals, he made some delightful animals. In fact, I think the best animals in the entire world, have a guess which country I think they come from. Uh, Australia, of course. <laughs> Definitely. Well, I happen to have that bias, don't I? Does anyone know the name of this animal God made? Oh, a koala. I think every American boy and girl wants to go to Australia to cuddle a koala. Of course, there's a big secret. We don't like to tell too many people, but I'll let you in on it. Do you know in Australia, we know this, but uh, in the wild, koalas are actually smelly, flea-bitten varmints that rip your eyeballs out. But we don't tell too many people about that. We don't want them to know that. But a koala is a marsupial, has a pouch. Here's another animal that has a pouch. You know, when I look at these animals like these in Australia, I don't think of evolution, I think of creation. And I'll tell you why. Do you know a kangaroo, when it is born, it's only about oh, half an inch long, it looks like a little red jelly bean, and it has a mouth and two legs, it doesn't have any eyes, it can't see. Can you imagine a jelly bean with a mouth and two legs and it comes out of the birth canal and crawls up the pouch and it knows where to go, what to do and how to do it, and it crawls into the pouch, it knows where to go, what to do and how to do it, attaches itself to its mother to get its milk and develop from there. Who thinks that happened by chance random processes over millions of years? Who thinks it was designed that way? Yeah, when I, when I think of when I think of the kangaroo, I don't think of evolution. I think of what? Creation. And you know what I say to my kids? It's designed to do what it does do. And what it does do, it does do very well, doesn't it? Don't you think? They think it does. I do too. Hope you do. Do you, by the way? I hope so. We have a great time talking about those animals. Here's another animal that reminds me of creation. It's uh, a wombat. Can you say wombat? wombat? Now, a wombat has a pouch like a kangaroo, but it doesn't face forwards. The pouch and a wombat faces backwards, and so all the young jump in at the rear end. Can you imagine that? <laughs> and I have people say to me, Mr. Ham, why does a wombat have a pouch that faces backwards? Well, students, a wombat tunnels under the ground. Can you imagine what would happen if the pouch faced forwards? It would fill up with dirt and you'd get fossilized wombats real quickly, wouldn't you? <laughs> Guess what I say to my children? It's designed to do what it does do, and what it does do, it does do very well, doesn't it? Don't you think? I think it does. Hope you do. I do. We have a great time talking about those animals. And again, I don't think of evolution when I see the wombat. I think of what? Creation. But I want to tell you my favorite animal of all time. Does anyone know the name of this one? A ah, platypus. In fact, Buddy has a platypus right here, don't you, Buddy? There it is. Did you know when it was first discovered in Australia in 1797 and they sent it back to England, Scientists thought that somebody had obtained all these different animals, chopped them all up and stitched them all together to make one animal. <laughs> Can you imagine that? You know why? <coughs> you imagine finding an animal like this. It has a bill like a duck, hair like a bear, web feet like a knot, a tail like a beaver, lays eggs like a turtle, feeds its young on milk like a mammal, has spurs like a rooster, and uh, has poison like a snake. <laughs> I mean, if you believe in evolution, it evolved from everything, didn't it? <laughs> By the way, the platypus is my favorite animal because I think every time an evolutionist looks at the platypus, I think God smiles because I think he made it just for them. That's why it's my favorite animal. And you know what, boys and girls? Buddy Davis has made up a song about it's designed to do what it does do and what it does do, it does do very well. It's a song about the platypus and we want you all to sing this song. And here's the chorus. Let's say the words of the chorus together and then Buddy's going to sing it and you sing along with Buddy, okay? It's designed to do what it does do, what it does do, it does do well, doesn't it? Yes, it does. I think it does. Do you? I do. Hope you do too, do you? Think you can sing that? I had a whole lot of fun when he took several critters and made them into one. He made the critter and put it in a river. It lives down under in Australia. It's designed to do what it does do. What it does do, it does do well, doesn't it? Yes, it does. I think it does. Do you? I do. Hope you do too. Do you? 
On day six, God created it strange when he took this and that from several things. It's a mammal like a kangaroo. It has poison, sonar, and milk too. It's designed to do what it does do. What it does do, it does do well, doesn't it? Yes, it does. I think it does. Do you? I do. Hope you do too. Do you? I think the Lord laughed when he put on the fur. With the chuckle, he gave it a rooster spur. It's got a duck like beak, a beaver's tail and feet. And it lays eggs down by the creek. It's designed to do what it does do. What it does do, it does do well, doesn't it? Yes, it does. I think it does. Do you? I do. Hope you do too. Do you? It makes evolutionists scratch their heads. What on earth is that? They said it's a platypus. What a grand design! It does what it does, and it does do fine. It's designed to do what it does do. What it does do, it does do well, doesn't it? Yes, it does. I think it does. Do you? I do. Hope you do too. Do you? Seeing as he sang a song about an Australian animal, I think it's only fair, seeing as we're in America, that he's singing an animal about an American animal too. Do you think so? Who's ever heard of a bird called the woodpecker? Oh, well, Buddy has a real fun song about the woodpecker. How much wood does a woodpecker pack when a woodpecker packs on wood? When the woodpecker packs, that woodpecker packs as much wood as it should pack wood. God made the woodpecker on day five. When he finished, he said, it's good. How much wood does a woodpecker pack when a woodpecker packs on wood? You'd think that woodpecker's bill would break or get a migraine when it eats. But God designed that woodpecker kind with a spring behind their beak. As they drill in a tree, it amazes me. Those birds don't break their necks. But how much wood does a woodpecker pack when they go peck, 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 peck? How much wood does a woodpecker pack when a woodpecker packs on wood? When the woodpecker packs that woodpecker packs as much wood as it should pack wood. God made the woodpecker on day five. When he finished, he said it's good. How much wood does a woodpecker pack when a woodpecker packs on wood? That woodpecker sounds just like a drum as he thumps against the tree. He blinks his eyes in the sawdust flies, he'll never miss a beat. God put a cushion in his head so his brains don't turn to mush. Put sticky stuff on its tongue so it can catch a buck, 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 buck. How much wood does a woodpecker pack when a woodpecker packs on wood? When the woodpecker packs, that woodpecker packs as much wood as it should pack wood. God made the woodpecker on day five. When he finished, he said, it's good. How much wood does a woodpecker pack when a woodpecker packs on wood? When the woodpecker packs, that woodpecker packs as much wood as it should pack wood. See, we can have fun as a Christian talking about God's creation, can't we? <laughs> well, you know what, boys and girls? God made, as I said, the sea creatures, the flying creatures on day five, the land creatures he made on day six. And when God made the land creatures, he then made the first man, Adam. And when he made the first man, Adam, he made Adam from dust. He brought the animals to Adam and he wanted Adam to name them. You could think of Adam saying, wow, Dodo, that's a great name. Bear, that's another name. We're not sure of the names that Adam gave to them, of course. But you know, here he is, he's naming all the animals. He looks around, he says, wait a minute, there's male and female chimp, there's male and female dodo, male and female deer. Where's Mrs. Adam? There was no one that looked like him. I mean, he didn't look at a female chimp and say, oh, she's close enough, I'll date her. He didn't do that, did he? There was no one that looked like him. And so you know what God did? He put Adam to sleep and out of his sight he made the first woman and the first word Adam said was wow, which is bone of my bone, flesh of my flesh in Australian English. But anyway, <laughs> hey boys and girls, I want you to have a look back here. Hmm, I want you to look at something. Can you see those animals in the background there? In fact, uh, those green animals there, what do they look like? They look like dinosaurs. Ah. And what is that animal back there in blue near the wow? It looks like a what? A dinosaur. Mr. Ham, are you saying that God made dinosaurs on day six alongside of Adam? Yes, because if God made the land animals on day six, he made the dinosaurs. They're land animals and they live beside Adam. By the way, I can prove it to you. I have a photograph that Eve took in the Garden of Eden. 
And there you can see Adam and T-Rex all living happily together. Well, if she did have a camera, that's what it would have looked like, I'm sure. And you can imagine if there was a newspaper in the Garden of Eden, the headline would have been, dinosaurs made on six day, read all about it, dinosaurs made on six day. And here we are with all the dinosaurs and Adam and Eve living happily together. Say, Mr. Ham, how long ago was that? Well, if you add up all the dates in the Bible, it only comes to about 6,000 years. And I had boys and girls say, Mr. Ham, wait a minute, wait a minute. What about the scientists that say dinosaurs lived millions of years ago? I want to teach you something very special this morning, something from the book of Job. You know what God taught a man called Job? He said, Job, where were you when I laid the foundations of the earth? In other words, where were you? Were you there when I made the earth, Job? And I want you to remember this, boys and girls, something you'll never forget. The next time somebody says millions of years ago, I want you politely and nicely, you put up your hand and say, excuse me, were you there? Can you remember that? <coughs> next time somebody says millions of years ago, what do you say? Oh, you can say it louder than that. Next time somebody says millions of years ago, what do you say? Were you there? You know something? I've had boys and girls come to me and say, Mr. Ham, we asked the evolutionists, were you there? And they said, no, we weren't. But they said, you weren't either. What do we do now, Mr. Ham? I say, well, that's easy. You say, no, I wasn't there, but I know someone who was, and I have his word, and I have the history book of the universe, which tells us all about dinosaurs. Are you interested? <laughs> Figure you remember that? See, boys and girls, think of this. And I want you to answer in a nice, loud voice. Has any human being always been there? Yes or no? No. Has any, does any human being know everything? No. Does any scientist know everything? No. Has any scientist always been there? No. Who's the only one who's always been there? God. Who knows everything? So, in a big loud voice, who should you always trust first, God or the scientist? God. And I want you to remember that. 